Welcome back to The Conscious Entrepreneur. Today, we're joined by Samela Watson, a tech entrepreneur reshaping the hospitality industry. Her platform, Block, which is B-L-C-K, is a membership community aimed at making travel more accessible for remote workers, digital nomads, and those seeking personal growth through new experiences. Samela's journey has been driven by a unique blend of entrepreneurship and spirituality. And she has decided to share that journey with the world. In her new ebook, Shifting on Purpose, she explores the transformative power of fasting and spiritual growth. Join us today as we explore her entrepreneurial pivots, challenges, and the pr profound role of faith in her work. Stay tuned for an insightful conversation on integrating spirituality with innovation. I hope you enjoy this conversation with Samela Watson. Hey, Samela, great to see you. Thanks so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me, Alex. I'm happy to be here. So you have a really interesting background as a someone in the hospitality tech space, uh, currently working on a project called Block, that's spelled B-L-C-K. Um, why don't we just start off by you sharing a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey. I know you've done many things uh, in this space, but uh, walk us through what the most recent projects are and what we're trying to solve with Block. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Block is, um, we're speaking at a very interesting time because we're in the midst of a pivot. Um, and um, so I can't talk about the pivot without saying how we first started. And so living in Miami, 11 years, uh, Block was uh, launched in 2023, last year, and the vision for Block last year was to help uh, everyday people get into real estate, right? People wanted to make passive income from short-term rental, but they didn't have the funds to go out and purchase this second property. Um, and so Block was able to essentially be the landlord for um, short-term rental hosts, which we called rentrepreneurs. Um, they were able to lease fully furnished places from us to then go out and put it in the world of the Airbnbs and the VRBOs. And so that was going really well. Amazing um, feedback. I learned a lot. Um, I failed a lot, but I learned a lot more importantly. Um, but as of September 2023, New York City banned Airbnb in all things short-term rental, um, hence me making the move um, to Brooklyn. And I've been here for two months now. And on this side of the journey, Block is going to be a membership-based home exchange marketplace. And our vision there is very simple. We believe that traveling should be a human right. Um, and so we're going to do our best to make it as affordable and as accessible to um, those who are remote workers, digital nomads, and simply people who want to become their better selves by seeing the world. Uh, going through a pivot is no small task. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it myself at, at my company. In fact, I just uh, we just did a whole uh, episode called The Path to Pivot with Jason Shen, where we talk about uh, all the uh, trials and tribulations of doing that. Um, so tell us, I mean, it sounds like a little bit of this was regulatory or macro uh, focus, but walk us through the, the details of, of how you saw this happening, uh, decided to pivot, decided that this was the best uh, approach and um, other considerations that you had when it went about switching this business? Um, it's so funny because it wasn't a decision that I was actively looking to make, but seeing as though everything that I do is spiritually rooted, um, it was more like God tapping me on my shoulder, like, look over here. And, um, and so, you know, when New York banned short-term rentals, the question, the first question that came to my mind is, how long before it hits Miami? How long before it hits other major cities, right? Um, and so with that pending in the background, I then said, do you have a solution if it was to hit Miami? Do you know how you would navigate it? And then once I understood very well that I did have a solution, it's like, so why not do the solution now instead of waiting? And so as I'm like having these internal conversations um, I'm like, okay, well, cool. I'll go back and forth from Miami to New York and make this happen. And then 
after a fast, it was like, no, you're going to move to New York and I'm here now. So it was more of a prompting than it was me like actively deciding I want to relocate to New York or even like switch the business model because Block was fairly new. We weren't even a year old. Um, and, and the model was, it was getting some great buzz. We had some early customers. We had staged several properties. And so it felt like a disruption, honestly. <laughs> but it was the best thing I did <laughs> thus far. <laughs> so you, uh, you obviously have quite the entrepreneurial muscle or mindset because uh, this is not your first company. It's not like you woke up one day and started Block. You did a company before this called Sabaya. So what's linking all these things together? Where, where is your motivation coming from? Because, I mean, hospitality is not an easy space to be building a business in. It's actually, you're a, a thousand percent correct. Um, honestly, I naively moved to Miami like, oh, I just want a better life. The weather is amazing from Chicago, right? Um, without even a consideration of entrepreneurship, let alone tech entrepreneurship. What were you doing at the time? Working in hotels, actually. Um, front office, operations, things of that sort in hotel industry. And so um, I moved to Miami with just like, oh, there's plenty of hotels. You can have a great life there. <laughs> and then in the midst of working at these hotels, I began to like see, oh, they can be doing this better. Why aren't they doing this? Oh, my goodness. The guest experience would be so much better if they did these things. And so, you know, it's always easy to criticize from the sideline until you decide to get in the game yourself. Um, but what I had on my side when I decided to get in the game was this level of uh, being naive, right? Like I didn't come into the game jaded. And so the truth is I didn't have all the stats. I didn't have all these things that quote unquote are up against you. When you first start, I came in like, sure, I can get it done. Why not? <laughs> And um, I gave it my best shot. I learned a lot. I failed a lot, but I always remain curious. I always remain very much a student to life. Um, and so in the midst of building, you know, going after this entrepreneurial journey, I decided, okay, well, I think you can do it. And then the more I learned, the more I'm like, yeah, you can totally do it. Yeah, I think we're doing it. Wait. I think we're absolutely doing it, right? And so that's kind of how it happened. Um, but having the audacity to uh, pivot and move and relocate, that's like, the truth is, I that is the only option, right? There is no plan B. Plan A is be an awesome entrepreneur that's going to make an impact. And so... You know, the truth is, whether it's block or not, I can't unknow how amazing it is to take something from your mind and bring it to life to where it's adding value to other people's lives. And so that is my why. Um, one of my whys. Another why is I don't come from an entrepreneurial background. Um, I don't have anybody in my family who's a tech entrepreneur. Um, and so my family's looking at me from the sideline, like, I think she's doing something, but I'm not exactly sure how this works, but it seemed like she's doing something great, you know? And so it's, it's a legacy thing now. A legacy thing, meaning the, in the future. A legacy thing as in right now, I am doing things today that my future self will be proud of. I'm investing in my future self today um, so that I'm proud of it and that my family can have something to um, be proud of as well. Awesome. That's fan that's fantastic. Uh, and I know that you have uh, a lot of spiritual motivation uh, to, to what you're doing. And you have this great, uh, you have this great ebook that you published, which is called Shifting on Purpose, which really lays out your plan. And, and there's sort of two prongs to it. There's a, there's a spiritual part of it. And then there's a physical part of it, which is specifically around fasting. Um, I want to talk about both of these things. I don't know which one you would like to talk about first, but you know, if we were to lay these two out and, and say like, 
What's your operating system here, Simela, for, for this? How do you stay motivated? How do you keep yourself going? Uh, what is the, the North Star that you're, that you're following? Talk us through that. And then I want to go into a lot of detail uh, on, this, uh, on these elements. Absolutely. So, yes, I, I started fasting. Well, actually, I started the journey of who am I? Can I really do this? Can I really build a business that can make millions of dollars, right? Like, and then in the midst of me discovering, yes, you can. Yes, you've done things that has proven to be outside of the box, outside of the norm. Once I went and checked my receipts, as I would say, it helped build more confidence. But in the midst of building this confidence, I'm like, I am pretty awesome, right? Like, so who who created me? And so that's when the like the spiritual cap just flew off. And in the midst of that curiosity, I began to dig deeper with building a relationship with God, began to build a relationship with spirituality and what it means to have morals and values and stand for something. And so the more I've done fasts, the greater my spiritual eye is opened. Okay. And what, so what, what kicked that off for you? Like what, what was the setting? Where were you? Uh, what was going on in your life when you started asking these, these questions? I was definitely in Miami. Um, I was at the point of, I think I'm doing this, but can I do this? <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, because that question came up very frequently. Honestly, it comes up frequently. All Like, it comes up all the time. And um, once that question came up, I'm like, okay, other people must know something that I don't know. And let's start figuring out what do they know that I don't know. So I started reading books. I started reading self-help books, self-development books, Um founder books, entrepreneurial books, mindset shifting books. And so just in that discovery, I wanted to ensure that my work was rooted in something, hence my spirituality. And so after doing, I've done over eight different fasts, um, ranging from three days to 31 days. And the the reason why I've done longer fast is because I needed more clarity. <laughs> Send help now. <laughs> um, and the shorter ones were more like, okay, let's just reground ourselves. And so definitely in Miami, definitely building Sabaya. Um, but as I was building Sabaya, I'm, I'm full-time entrepreneur for over five years now. Something happened and I was like, okay, maybe I should get a job and still be an entrepreneur, right? Like, because these bills aren't going to pay themselves. In the midst of getting a job, I'm like, I don't want to be disrespectful to God. Like, I, I'm definitely going to still continue this journey in building Sabaya, but we would like to live a different type of lifestyle. And so... Several things happened where it was almost like the job fell in my lap, but then it turned out that it was kind of like a conflict of interest at the job. And so I'm like, wait, why did we just go through all of this? Like, what was the point here? And it was apparently I might be a little bit more hard headed than I care to admit. And it was because I needed to make the transition from Sabaya to Block. And so in the midst of making that transition, um, the fa in the fast, it was revealed, like, I have a bigger vision for you, but I need you to trust me, right? And so the, the more I jumped in, the more trust I was required of me, and um, I'm full-fledged in now. <laughs> And so, so let's, let's, let's get into this. It, it's really, really interesting. So by the way, I'm no stranger to fasting myself. I, I did a, uh, a prolonged, no, I mean, nothing compared to yours, but uh, I did a seven day spiritual fast at Gabriel Cousins's retreat in Southern Arizona uh, several years ago with, with my wife. And that was super cool because that was um, no food, 
and then no, you know, media or anything like that. It was, it was, I mean, there was a social element to it because it was a whole group going through it. And we did um, some elements of meditation and exercise, but it was really recommended that we spend time in, in, in the quiet as well. But let's get into this fasting practice because uh, first of all, there's so much confusion about what fasting is and what it does and, and, and how it can, and how it can help uh, so many misconceptions that it's bad for you, uh, et cetera. So just give us the very basic building blocks of like why you do this and what the benefits are and like what's included in a fast. Absolutely. So I've never done a fast, just to be clear, that was no eating at all. I'm not, I don't know how to do that part one. Not, I'm not there yet. Um, so the reason why I do fast is to turn off the outside noise in the world because the world is loud. It's very loud. And when you're trying to do something that is not physically in your face and you don't know how to do it, um, it can be intimidating. And so the goal for me every time I fasted was to gain clarity on a specific thing that was part of the entrepreneurial journey, right? Like the calling, who I, who I understood God needed me to be. I needed to gain clarity on that. And the best way I can gain clarity is to shut the world off to the best of my ability and, and only give my attention to be aware and in the space and place to receive downloads. And so the benefits from that is um, understanding and hearing myself and my thoughts. Uh, the benefits is seeing where trauma and like the inner me was sending me to a different direction that I no longer wanted to be on. And then it revealed a lot of who I can become um, in the midst of during the fast. And so once the fast was done, is done, it's now my responsibility to show up accordingly based on that amount of time that I was able to see myself, whether it was three days or 31 days. Mm -hmm. And and you're, you're really doing this to, to tune into that inner voice or to, to find some clarity or to find some intuition. And uh, just to clarify here, so you're saying you're you're fasting, which is uh, changing the way that you're eating. So you're 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 eating um, no meat. You're eating presumably not a lot of processed foods and stuff like that. You're you you have some element of caloric restriction, right? So meaning you're not eating what you what you used to. But then on top of that, you're removing things like music, social media, TV, alcohol, sex, other interactions with people. So you're like really trying to narrow the amount of inputs or the amount of stimulation that you're getting so that you can tune this inner vessel, right. To be able to hear what you're trying to, to hear. Right? Absolutely. Is that right? Absolutely. I would, I would say like purifying my thoughts so that I can sift out the negativity, sift out the insecurities and fully tune into, is that what you really want? Is that how you should do it? Right. Like I can hear my own thoughts without the interruption in the energy transfer of others. So yeah, it, it was more like a plant-based fast, right? Like, and I followed the Daniel's diet um, when, I, when I'm eating and hours of prayer. And, you know, I just kind of made it my own as anything, you know, when you're an entrepreneur, you kind of make up your own rules anyway. <laughs> so I made it my own um, with the focus of being able to receive a download at any moment during my fast. Were you still working during the fast? I was, but lightly working. Um, like the 31 days, of course, you still have to work. Um, in life, you still have to work. But it was more like if I'm working and a prompting comes on, I allow that prompting to take dominance over the work. Okay, got it. And, and, and look, like this kind of discipline that you're talking about with the fast with abstaining of all those things that we just talked about, like it really freaks people out. Like people, people probably looked at you like, what are you doing? And it's because we're so overstimulated. We're so distracted. We're this constant, like dopamine ADHD sort of world, like running around, like, you know, the total hamster wheel, monkey mind um, type of stuff. I'm sure your friends and family were like, what are you doing, Samela? So I would literally have to tell them, Hey guys, I'm fasting. So if you tried to call me, I might not answer, but after, 
I think they began to understand the power of it once I came out new or different or improved or wait, she really did say she was going to do that and now she's doing it. What does she know that I don't know, right? And it got to the point where people would ask me how I fasted. And then I had like a generic Google sheet um, and I would send to people. And then I tried to go and find it like a month ago and I could not find it. And so I was just like, okay, I have to actually write an ebook about this. And because I, after a while, people did begin to ask and say, how do you fast? How do you make this happen? What do I do? Tell me each step. And then that's when I decided, you know what? Because it's been so transformative to me, I believe other people can benefit from this as well. And so that's allowing you to, so so you're calming your mind, you're, you're reducing the um, effort in your body because you're changing what you're, what you're eating. You're reducing the amount of information that's flowing in by you know, not watching media or TV or social media, et cetera. And so all this allows you to be more focused on your transformation, your healing, your needs, your skills, your talent, your purpose, and stuff like that. So is that that's the equation then to the spiritual growth side of things. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's the equation. Yep. And that's how I began to tap into my greatness because I was able to see how great I was. I was able able to understand what image I was made in, how I should be thinking, what is really my inheritance? What can I really become? And so once I started realizing, wait, so I have access to that. I can actually do that. Someone like me can do something like that if I remained focused and had a level of discipline. And so the more I fasted, the more I began to say, absolutely, I can do it. Like, duh, of course I can. <laughs> so what were the, what were the biggest, uh, you, you mentioned that your, your family and friends would have seen sort of a before and after of you, you know, and like they've seen you evolve, but, you know, from your point of view, what was the shift like? So, so what's the difference between Samela now and Samela pre the eight fast that you were doing? What were the toughest things that this was exposing to you? It exposed a lot of my inner um, insecurities, my inner uh, traumas that I didn't even know I was carrying around with me from childhood, from um, like a lack mentality. So it exposed a lot about how I was responsible for a lot of things that I was not accessing. And it required me to decide If you still want to do those things, that's fine, but you're probably not going to access this other side, right? So it left that mirror in my face (laughs) to decide who I wanted to become. But it's so funny because in the rerouting with the calling to relaunch Block and make the transition to New York, um, I did a fast and I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Sure. Let's get it done. I'll do it from Miami. And on the third day of the fast, which was only a three day fast, he's like, no, you're moving. And I'm like, wait, I don't, I don't know New York. I don't, I don't understand. And so it took me a weekend to get in agreement, but thank goodness I had already done several fasts because I did not make it to Miami. I mean, New York until six months after getting into agreement, I had to be rerouted back to Chicago in Had that been revealed to me before I said yes, I would probably still be in Miami, mostly because I was in Miami for 11 years. All of my family, majority of my family is in Chicago. And so I was able to be Samela uninterrupted, the new Samela, the evolved Samela, whatever that meant, right, on any given day. But being re- re- rerouted to Chicago for those four and a half to six months, I was able to sh- see, oh, wow, you really did change. Oh, wow, you are really a different person, right? Because, you know, family knows you from day one. And so when I don't respond the same way that Samela two years ago would have responded or with the same thought process, um, 
I was able to actually see, oh, I get it now. This was part of the journey that you needed, but didn't know you needed because now you can see yourself. You can see that you have graduated to a new level. You can see that now you can be different and still be loved and still be with your family and still, you know, be an entrepreneur. You can do all these things because you've done the work. And is there a, is there a community of spiritual entrepreneurs like this in, in Brooklyn? Is this, is the, is the fasting slash spiritual entrepreneur thing uh, catching, like, is it catching a wave here? So the truth is I never really knew what to do with this part of myself, right? Because I found my tech community. I found my party community. I found my like fashion community, right? This part I thought was a personal, just me thing. But once I was called to write this book, I'm like, okay, I'm going to write the book. I am now craving the idea of other people having these conversations. And so even being invited on here was kind of like, okay, understood, right? Like it's it's preparing me to find that community. And if I cannot find it, I may have to be responsible for creating it. Yeah, you know, the the it's, it's funny that you mentioned that. So when I started the Conscious Entrepreneur Summit three years ago, uh, it, it didn't like nothing existed. Right. And one day I was, I was out walking my dog and, and I had this sort of realization that, Hey, I really like being an entrepreneur and I really like personal growth and, you know, self-development and stuff. And I really like community and all those three things came together to, to build the conscious entrepreneur summit. And then we created the conscious, conscious entrepreneur podcast out of that. Um, but what I, what I want to share is when we did the very first uh, summit. It was in Denver in May of 2022. And it was really interesting because uh, I saw people arriving at the event, recognizing friends of theirs or people that they knew and not realizing like, oh, I didn't know that you were into this too. I thought it was just me. And so there's so much of that in the entrepreneur community where, um, you know, entrepreneur, being an entrepreneur is an incredibly difficult job, right? And every day, you know, you got to find wells of motivation and inspiration to, to keep going. And there's so many challenges out there. Um, and so, you, and people need not just outlets for their creativity. They also then need support in, in, in community and just being able to see people realizing, oh, wow, I'm not alone was magical. Like so interesting to see. And uh, so I'm not surprised to hear you say it was really easy to plug into some other parts of your network and stuff like that. Um, and I'll bet you that now that this ebook is out, now that you're starting to speak about this more openly, guess what? People are going to rally around it. Communities will form around it. That's certainly what I've found with Conscious Entrepreneur. I, I wholeheartedly believe that because um, wealth is a spiritual thing. Like you, you, you have to know yourself to access wealth because once you access it, the whole point of accessing is to keep it, right? And so if you are even grounded in something, you can access it, but can you keep it, right? And so I believe that because we're in a climate that people are becoming more aware because their believes your lifestyle, right? Like that's another thing that Block really wants to focus on is understanding a believes your lifestyle, right? We do not have to work our fingers to the bone. We do not have to be on this hamster wheel to also be great and add value and do awesome things. And so I think when it started unfolding to me, it was kind of mind blowing how intertwined my entire journey has been. And I didn't notice it until like the top of this year. It's, it was mind blowing. Tell us about other things you've learned and studied along the way. You're, you have this list of, uh, of books that you've referenced, um, but just you know, tell us where else you find inspiration and other great things for an entrepreneur to tap into. Absolutely. So um, networking is hugely important, but also hugely underrated. But I think it, it is not, I think it's pushed in people's faces, but it's not properly understood. And so I think um, 
I was very intimidated with the idea of networking and like speaking to people and how to do that. And so I'm going to like dab into that. I think people, once they understand the value of building a community in how valuable they can be to a community, that will be interesting, right, for people to begin to do that. So I, I absolutely support the idea of networking. I do not support the idea of neglecting your work to network, right? And so that's where I think the balance needs to be found at. Um, another area that um, I, I have focused on is the mindset shifting, right? And I had to dig through that with the spiritual part of it. But a lot of times we don't challenge our choices. We just think that we think that way for some reason. But once you start asking, why do I think that way? Where is this coming from? I think we can kind of clarify and become more authentically ourselves. And so mindset shifting is huge. And then um, another thing that I've struggled with, and I am still very much like on the market for um, refining is time management, right? And so I've studied um, what that looks like with time blocks, what that looks like with um, productivity. Does it matter if you work 40 hours a week or does it matter that you do everything that's on your checklist, right? Like shifting, shifting this mindset from being a employee to an entrepreneur, but how to do it without making yourself feel bad and kind of like finding your own rhythm in life. And so, um, which I think, again, all kind of circles back to oneness and who you are and what you're grounded in. So those are some of the things that are hugely important and that I've been studying. Um, what are your also- top, what are your top resources for mindset shifts or questioning? Who am I? Where am I going? So I thought I, I've recently become um, part of this YouTube university. At first I was like, no, I don't have time to watch videos. I'm not going to do it. And then within the last like two years, literally, I don't even have a TV. I literally watch YouTube. <laughs> um, and so YouTube is big for me. I have some people who don't know that they're my mentors, but they're like my mentors on YouTube. Um, Myron Golden is uh, one of my favorites. He's really big on um, no nonsense handling your business, but from a roots of spirituality. Um, I'm really big on reading books. I, I make it and I like the hard copies, but I also find audiobooks really easy to do while I'm trying to do things around the house, go for walks, things of that sort. Um, and then I'm pretty self, pretty much self taught. And once I discover something by accident, then I just kind of cling to it and say, yeah, this is a good area for me. So, so the, the one that I always refer people to, and, and uh, if you haven't read this, I would definitely put this on your list is uh, the book, the untethered soul by Michael Singer. Have Never you ever read that one. It. Okay. No, but I'm going to write it down. So uh, I love that one. It's probably one of my, it's probably my, my number one most recommended book. Uh, out there and highly, highly recommend. Well, hey, uh, Samela Watson, it's really been great to chat with you on this show. Con- congratulations on your journey. Congratulations with everything that you're building with Block. And we are so supportive of this uh, transition and the conversation that you're starting now about fasting and spirituality. It was really fun to talk with you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. It's been amazing. And thank you for all you do for the entrepreneurial community. Thank you.